Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Micro Projects with Michelle. Today I'm super excited because we're going to be doing another micro project. Today we're gonna to be working with UN refugee data. So I'm super excited, let's get started. Okay guys, let's get started on micro project 11, which is United Nations refugee data. So for this one, we're going to basically look at a refugee data set. Um, so the UNHCR has a database of refugees and internally displaced persons around the world. The data is updated daily and includes information about the number of refugees and, and IDPs, the countries that they're from, where they're in, and then how many people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so they provide us with an API that allows us to uh, basically access the data. And so today we're going to be exploring that data, um, working with it, and doing some calculations. So we're going to start by importing some necessary libraries. So the first thing we're going to do is the request library. So this is something we haven't worked with before, but we're going to do that along with pandas. And so the reason why we're doing requests is because um, we wanted to get the raw access to the data. And so by using the request library instead of pandas, we're able to do that and then create our own data frame and visualization. So we're going to start by just doing these two import statements. OK, I'm going to run this block of code to make sure that it saves. Perfect. OK, so the first thing that we're going to do for part one is fetch the refugees data for a single year. And so for part 1.1, what we're going to do is get all of the available years. And so to do that, our API documentation gives a get endpoint that we can use to get all of the available years of data. And that's under this URL right here. And so the request library allows us to make a get request to a specific URL by using request.get. So we're going to input this URL. And then finally, to get the actual data, we're going to want to convert the response to a JSON format using response.json. So we're basically going to do all the steps as we previously mentioned. So we're going to do request.get and then http colon slash slash api dot oops unhcr.org slash rsq slash v1 slash years. And then we're going to save that um, into a JSON response into our variable years. And so if we give this a run, this will give us a list of all of the years. So it looks like the data goes from 2003 all the way to our current year of 2025. So let's give this cell a quick run. It looks like we passed all the cases, which is amazing. And so now we can move on to part 1.2, which is getting the number of refugees for a single year. And so um, according to the data, um, 2016 is the year with the most refugees. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get the number of refugees for the year of 2016. And so to do that, we're going to do a get request to the slash submissions endpoint. And if you look in the URL, it takes in a specific year. So you can do year equals that year, and then it'll get you the data from that year. And so what we're going to do is using the similar code that we did for puzzle 1.1, we're going to do a get request that respond, returns a JSON object and then store that into refugee data 2016. And it's going to use the same commands. I'm just going to copy paste it for our own reference. Um, so I'm going to put it up here for now. And I'll delete it later. So as you can see, we're going to do request.get first. So, And then instead, we're going to want to put our new um, URL in, so HTTP colon slash slash api dot unhcr dot org slash rsq slash v1 slash submissions question mark year equals instead of doing bracket year we're going to put in the year that we're trying to look at which is 2016 because that's the year with the most refugees so we're going to do 2016 and then um we're actually gonna um since the variable that we want is this i'm actually going to rename the first one to be um response equals this. So that way we can do refugees data 2016 is going to be response.json. And then we can just print out refugees data 2016. So I'm going to delete this code so because we don't really need it anymore now that we're done looking at it. And so if I give this a run, it should give us the um, JSON data. So it looks like this. And it looks like we have results in our total of 160. 3206. So that is a lot of individuals. And so the last thing that we want to do is extract the totals. As you can see, it is under the key total. So we're just going to do refugees data 2016 um, with total, and then it'll get us the value. So we're going to do that exactly. And then we're going to give this cell a quick run to see our final number, which matches the one up here. So it looks good. And so let's run these test cases really quickly just to make sure it looks good. All tests pass, perfect. So now let's move on to part two. Okay, so for part two, what we want to do is query the data for many years. And so part 2.1 involves us creating a condom separated list of all the years. 
And so as you can see up here, we have all of this data, but we want to make it into one um, comma separated list. And so to reduce the amount of API calls for years, we can use a year parameter to get the data for multiple years at once. So um, for example, the year parameter can take a list of years. And so we need to um, basically just make one list of comma separate list of years. And so we can use something called the join function to join a list of strings together. And so here are some of the examples on how it works. So here we have my list containing A, B, and C. And if we do comma dot join of my list, it'll return us A comma B comma C. Similarly, if we do semicolon, it'll give us A semicolon B semicolon C. And then as you can see here, here's another example. And so for integers, it's going to be slightly different. So that's where we're going to be working with. So this is really important because years are numbers. And so what we need to do is we need to first um, basically convert the list to a string as a part of joining the elements together by using the map function inside of our join function. So here you can see we do comma dot join, but then we have to map the string as uh, string and then my list. And so that's going to basically turn everything into strings first and then joining them with whatever punctuation that we want or whatever value character set of letters we want. So um, here they do comma, for example. And so given all that, um, it should be pretty simple because we already have a years variable, right? So let's take a look at that. It is all of these years. And so what we want to do is create a comma separate, comma separate list of all the years in a variable called the years.csv. So since we want it to be comma separated, again, our first thing we're going to do the comma dot join and then if you look up here we want to map it because again we have numbers and we want strings so we're going to do dot join parentheses map and then the first argument for map is going to be string and then comma my list well in this case it will be years so we map string and then years so this should give us as you can see um, a comma separate list of all the years so this is what we had before and this is what we have after Okay, so now we can move on to part 2.2, which is URL encoding multiple years. And so again, the whole point of doing this is that we want to ultimately send this into the URL, right? And so we need to do something called URL encoding. So URL um, encoding requires some characters to be escaped. Um, and so for example, that would be written as with um, this, so 2003, percent 2C, 2004, percent 2C, etc., etc. And so what we want to do is we want to use this um, URL lib library and the URL lib parse.quote function to do URL encoding. So for example, um, as you can see here, um, we run import URL lib and then we import dot, uh, sorry, you do URL lib dot parse dot quote and then all the characters that we need encoding. And so here we need one, we want these and then it'll encode that into um, however it wants us to do. So here you can see um, for something like 2016, 2017, the only thing that needs to be encoded is the comma. So we do 2016 percent 2C and then 2017. So it'll do this automatically for us, making our lives a lot easier. In theory, we could have manually just added the special characters for comment into there, but it is a lot um, more difficult to do that by hand. And um, the reason why we're doing percent 2C is because um, the encoding for a comma is percent %2c because 2c is the hexadecimal for number 44 and 44 is the ASCII code for comma. So this is not something that you want to memorize. Um, so good thing we have these functions here because it would be a lot of work having to remember all this. But let's do um, the encoding. So encoded years is going to be, um, first obviously we need to import URL lib. So let's do that. And then we're going to do URL lib dot parse dot quote. And then we're just going to put years CSV in because that's our entire string. Oh, it should be years CSV. And then if we give this a quick run, as you can see now, it's been encoded. And so we have um, all of these percent two Cs in between each of the years, which looks amazing. And so let's give this a quick run and make sure we did it correctly before moving on to the next part, which we did. And so now for part 2.3, we're going to fetch the number of refugees for all the years. And so as you can see in part 1.2, we found the total number of refugees in 2016 alone, but now we want to do it for all of the years. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by just grabbing the code from the previous section because we've already um, coded it before. So I'm just going to grab this really quickly. And then I'm going to go down here and then just paste it so it's easier for us to reference. Um, and we're not going to use this um, exactly, but we can reference it for sure. So the first thing we're going to do is create a response. The response is equal to requests.get, and then we're going to do the URL. And so here, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the same URL, but instead of doing year equals 2016, 
we're going to do year equals, oh, let's put this in quotes. And then the year that we want is going to be um, this string up here. So I'm actually gonna copy paste this string over. And then after that, we're gonna wanna do um, refugees data all is equal to response.json to make it into a JSON file. So response.json. And then finally, what we're gonna do is refugees data all. And so that is going to basically show us what we have. So let's see if this works, it should. Oh, okay, so as you can see, we have um, a JSON variable now with the um, year and then the person. So this goes from 2003 all the way to 2022 and then also has some extra values and so one of the next things we're going to do now is create a data frame right and so as you can see that we have a lot of data but the really main thing that we want is um the key results and so we're going to do pg.data frame and then we're going to pass in a new data frame for um sorry we're going to pass in refugee data all results and that's going to be our new data frame And so if we do that, then we can see we have this new data frame um, where a year is one column, persons is the other, and each year corresponds to how many persons were displaced that specific year. And so now we can run a test case to make sure we did it correctly, which we did. And so now our final thing we're going to do is create a histogram of refugees by year. And so since we've already imported a data frame from a JSON object, all the uh, types of the data are generic objects, even though they're numbers, right? And so if we do um, refugees per year D types, you can see all the different types. So as you can see, year persons are all objects. And so what we want to do is we want to convert um, both of these things into numbers. And so luckily for us, we have a function called pd.toNumeric that will transform a column into a numeric data type. So to convert the year from column to generic object, we're just going to do and do this. And so what we can do is copy this code. So we can do refugees per year year is equal to pd.2 numeric refugees per year and then um, year and then we also want to do this for persons because that's also a number so let's do that as well i'm going to just replace this with persons and so let's give this a run and then we can actually run this exact same command again to see if our types have changed. So as you can see before, there were objects and now they're integers, which is perfect. And so our final thing is we can finally make our bar chart. So let's give this a run and see what it looks like. And so as you can see, our y-axis is our number of people displaced and our x-axis is the years. And as you can see, um, it kind of doesn't really have a trend it kind of goes up down up down but 2016 as we said before was the year with the most number of uh, internally displaced people so now let's give our final test case to run to make sure we did it correctly which we did and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to submit my work and check the auto grader to see how i did so i will be right back okay everyone so it looks like our mark project is done grading so as you can see everything is passed and we got our card which is beautiful and so as always if any of these uh test cases didn't pass be sure to go back to the code and rewatch the video to see what was going on um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching today's video i hope you guys enjoyed learning out with me and i can't wait to see you in the next one bye guys